So we already know that the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, right? So that's like the upper speed limit of the universe. But this is light moving in a vacuum. What about light that's moving through some other medium, right? So like a piece of glass or a piece of ice or some water or even air, right? When light moves through a medium, right? So I'm going to use a piece of glass as an example. Glass has molecules that make it up, right? So when light moves through something, a medium that has particles that make it up, that light isn't going to travel at the speed of light. It's going to slow down because what's going to happen is it's got to bounce into all these things and interact with them. And some of it's going to go through, but some of it's going to just uh, have to interact with everything as it goes through, right? And what that does is it causes it to slow down inside the medium, right? So how do we figure out how fast light is going inside this medium? So you need something called the index of refraction, okay? And every medium has what's called an index of refraction. And all the index of refraction is, it's the ratio of the speed of light to the velocity of the light inside the medium, right? So the lowercase letter n is the index of refraction. And this is just a ratio, right? Because speed of light is in meters per second. Velocity for your light is gonna be in meters per second. So when you divide them, you just get a number. So let's say this is a piece of glass with an index of refraction of 1.3, okay? And I wanna know, how fast is the light going in here? So I can figure that out using this, right? Because speed of light is just a constant. So I can say n equals c over v, right? If I want to solve for v, v is going to be c over n. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 1.3. And if you do that, you get 2.31 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's how fast my light will travel in a piece of glass that has an index of fraction of 1.3, okay? So something to notice about this. Well, first off, this is still like, yes, it's slowed down, but this is still pretty fast, right? This isn't like, you know, Olympic sprinter versus your grandmother. This is still really fast. This number here is still like 75% of the speed of light. So it's slowed down, yes, but it's not super slow. Also, this n has to be a number that's greater than or equal to one because the index of refraction is the ratio of c to v, right? So if you make your velocity the speed of light, which is the upper speed limit of the universe, right? That means that c divided by c is going to be your index of refraction, and c divided by c is 1, right? Because anything divided by itself is 1. So the smallest your index of refraction can ever be is 1, and it can only get bigger from there. And the other thing to notice is that the bigger this number gets, that means that this velocity gets slower. So a bigger index of refraction means your light is traveling slower, okay? So here's some common indices of refraction for things that you might see in a lab, right? See how they're all like one or two? We're not going to deal with any crazy stuff with the index of refraction of more than like two usually. Okay, so that's nice and all, but why is this useful? So let me show you what happens when you shine light through a piece of glass not only straight, but at different angles. Okay, so we got us a glass block here and I'm gonna shine a laser into it. Bam, right? And so you can see this laser beam as it travels through, it's hitting the surface of this glass block perpendicular and it doesn't look like it bends, right? It just travels straight through, which kind of makes sense because you've seen lasers before. But what happens if I bend this laser beam at an angle and make it strike the glass block at an angle? Now, I think you can see that it travels in here, and you can see that it bends when it hits this interface right here. It would be going in a straight line, kind of like this, right? But it's bent down. And then when you see over here, you can see it comes out, and it comes back the same way, right? So I get two bends. So what's going on here? You saw the light bending when I moved it at a different angle. So how do we, one, predict which way the light is going to bend, and two, actually calculate the angle, make a quantitative measurement of which how it bends. So first off, let me draw that piece of glass, right? So here's my glass, and I'm just going to say it has an index of refraction of 1.3. And this is air over here that has an index of refraction of about 1. And here was my laser beam coming in at an angle. Okay, so when light strikes something at an angle, you have to look first at the normal. The normal means perpendicular, right? So perpendicular to the surface. You should have seen that the light came in and nothing happened. It's when I moved it at an angle. So we're looking at how it is relative to the normal. So here's the general rules for how light is gonna bend. So if light goes from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction, it's going to bend towards the normal. So what that means, here's this ray of light. 
it would keep going this way, right? That's the way it wants to travel. But because it's going from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction, 1 to 1.3, the light's going to slow down. And if it slows down, it's going to bend towards the normal. So what that means is this light is going to bend down this way. It wants to go this way, but it's going to bend down, and it's going to end up going like this. And you saw that in that laser. Okay, so let's look at when it comes out. Draw my normal line again. Here's my normal, perpendicular to the surface. So light's going from glass back to air. High index of refraction in glass, low index of refraction in air, right? Because it's back in air over here. So it's going to bend away from the normal. So it wants to go this way, kind of, but instead it's going to bend away from the normal, and that's going to make it go like that. And you should have seen that. When you saw the laser beam go through that block, it kind of did one of these. It went in like this, and then came this way, and then came like that, right? Because when it crossed to the glass, it bent towards, and when it came out, it bent away. All right, so the next thing we need to know is what angle it makes. And to do that, we need Snell's Law. So this is Snell's Law. So Snell's Law says that the index of refraction times the sine of the angle on each side of the interface where it crosses from one medium to another is going to be the same, right? So N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So let me draw my picture of a glass block again. So to use Snell's Law, right, Here's my picture. First thing you need to do is define the angles, and this is where people mess up. The angle is measured from the normal, so when you're doing refraction problems, you need to draw a normal line where this light strikes the surface of the interface, right? So this is the interface where it's going from air to glass. You need to draw a normal line. People want to measure the angle from the surface, right? So this down here is not the angle. You're used to measuring surfaces, uh, angles from surfaces, right? So it's a mistake that a lot of people make at first, but it's measured from the normal. So this is theta 1, and N1 is the index of refraction, so it's 1. And then when it crosses into the glass, this angle, the angle between the ray and the normal, that's theta 2, and this is going to be N2, right? So let's just make up a number. Let's say theta 1 equals 15 degrees. Let's use Snell's Law to figure out what's the angle it's going to come out in the glass at. Okay, so what I've done is I've divided in 2 over, right, and that leaves me with this equals sine theta 2. And then to get rid of the sine, I have to take the arc sine of both sides, right? That'll cancel out the sine, and I'll be left with the arc sine, or the inverse sine, of n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2 is equal to my angle. And so go try this and calculate it, but your calculator needs to be in degrees. And so if you do it, it should look like this. And so you get 11.48 degrees. And that makes sense to me because here's my original angle. This was 15, right? So that means when this comes out, I went from a low index to a high index. My angle's bending towards the normal. So it should get smaller, and it's smaller. So it's 11.48 degrees. That's what it comes out. And so I want you to try this, right? I mean, you can look at it, but you can calculate it yourself. When it crosses back from glass to air, it's going to bend away from the normal, right? So here's my normal going from glass to air. This is going to bend away, right, because high to low. So this would become theta 1. This would become theta 2. There's N2, and this is N1. You can solve for the angle it's going to come back out at, right? So using Snell's Law is really pretty easy. Just remember, calculator in degrees, right? And can't tell you this enough. The angle, you have to measure the angle from the normal, not the surface. Measured from the normal, okay? Other than that, using Snell's Law is pretty easy.